Hi, it's Lexi. I'm out here on my balcony in my garden and I thought I owed you all an update since it's been a few months since my last one. Um, we are in the last week of May. We're about to be in June. Um, and spring was basically like a really abrupt, um, went from freezing frigid temperatures to like 80 degrees and sunny every day. Um, within like a week difference. So it was a very stark uh, change in temperature and um, basically it caused everything to green out and bloom at the same time. So um, woohoo if you have seasonal allergies because it, it became like uh, a pollen bomb within a couple weeks. And I am joking that everyone in Northeast Ohio right now is walking around with the sniffles and puffy eyes because everyone's allergies are just crazy and um, so that's where we're at right now. So um, I will show off what I have growing, um, some new additions, some things that did not work out, um, and we'll go from there. So stay tuned. So we're starting out out here. Uh, we do have some thunderstorms rolling in. It's been on um, like the 70s and humid here. Um, we did get a couple storms lately. Um, everything is really in full swing at this point. Um, if my plants aren't woken up by now, they're probably not going to be. So um, I will start off by saying that my last video I talked a lot about my perennials that I had overwintered. Well, this was my fig, and as you can see, I chopped it down because it did not survive. Um, and one way of gauging that is to look um, at the rings, which you can't really say in this video, um, but it should be green inside. There should be, you know, some sappy juice coming out of it. Th that didn't happen, and I cut this down today. So um, it really pained me. I gave it a lot of time. I asked a lot of people. Um, but I, I just wasn't convinced that it was still going to be alive. Although this one really hurt because I was in love with this fig. It was very large. I paid a lot of money for it and I'm pretty bummed that it's dead. Um, I also lost my passion flower from last year. Um, I did replace that as over here. Um, I think it's a different variety. It looks a lot different, but this thing has already, I want to say quadrupled in size from when I bought it. Um, and it's already just climbing right up this trellis. So um, I'm not too concerned. Um, I did want to have another one, so I might still try to get another one and stick it over in that corner maybe so I can utilize this trellis better. Um, I did end up buying another fig plant. Um, this is Sally, named by my dear cousin. And um, it's a little bit smaller. I bought this at the garden store, it's a hardy fig. So my plan, so I don't kill another one, is to bring this inside in the winter and overwinter it where it's safe and, and not at risk of dying. And I'll be honest, I think that we were good up until my last video and then we got this really rough, hard freeze for, I want to say at least a week straight where we were just frozen solid and I think that did it in for a lot of my plants out here, unfortunately. Um, which sucks, but it is what it is, and you just keep going and you learn from it. Um, I lost a lot of my herbs as well, my rosemary, my lavender, my mint, nothing came back. Um, the only things as far as my herbs go that survived was the sage. Um, absolutely rocked it out here in this little pot. Um, but sage is a little bit different, it's a little more hardy than some of the others. And then the catnip also managed to survive. Um, I really didn't care about the catnip, so it's kind of funny that that was like the one thing that made it, but you know, whatever. Um, I also have my boysenberries. As you can see, they are really taking off and they look a lot different than they did in my last video where they were just a couple leaves and were a couple inches of tall. Um, so they're really filling out. Um, this pot will probably be too small for them eventually, but for now I'm going to let them grow out in there see if um, I get any flowers this year. I don't expect to get any fruit at this point, but um, as you can tell, I like to wait and see what happens and I'm always down for whatever happens. This is my money tree. I stuck it outside because my little kitty likes to eat the leaves, as you can see. And I 
am sick of having to deal with that so I just stuck it out here and I'm gonna let it stay out for the summer and then I'll bring it in for the winter when it gets cold um I have I grew a few things from seeds I ordered um, like I want to say like $15 worth of seeds I got I think eight different varieties um, online and this is one of them it's a sweet banana pepper and um, there's actually two plants in there I have always grown them very tightly like that so I haven't had trouble um, these were grown at the same point but what I did was I chopped off the top of this one to delay it and let it bush out a little bit more and then left this as it goes um, and so you'll see it is starting to um, get some buds on there so um, in my opinion it's still a bit small but um, I think it's taking its time so we'll, we'll be okay um, down here <laughs> I have a monster mustard green um, that needs to be harvested because it's getting ready to go to seed there. Um, I'm not a huge fan of mustard greens, but you can braise them or add them to soups, so that's what I'll probably do with this guy. Um, I did also harvest a lot of greens, which you'll find on my blog. I put up a recipe, um, and I'm starting more from seed. So my one recommendation if you are growing greens at home is as soon as you plant your greens start another round of greens inside um, that way that you have this constant rotation going for the entire season unfortunately i wasn't so quick to do that i thought i would just um sow a few which these were sowed whenever i planted my greens and they suck so um, i actually started some more the day that i harvested um, there's still a little bit more to harvest here if I wanted to, um, this one's even coming back. This was like an arugula. It was delicious. It's got a nice, awesome flavor. Um, so I'll keep this bed as it is. I'm not going to pull everything. I don't want bare soil. So I'm just going to have to hang out and wait. Like I said, I'm going to have to cut down this mustard green very soon before it goes to flower because then it will get very bitter. This is my apple tree. I really didn't expect it to survive. It's like six inches tall it's a little dink and I've had it for a couple years now so it's kind of pathetic I don't even know if it's um, I don't even know what it is really what kind of apple it is um, but it grew back I had to chop off some of the top because it was uh, frostbitten and destroyed um, but as you can see it looks great and I'm just gonna let it chill and do its thing and we'll go from there I guess <laughs> um, I did decide to add some more strawberries um, I kind of wish I would have loaded up on strawberries last year um, and basically stuck them in every pot because I love strawberries and I want to eat them and the first year they don't really do so great so now that I'm in my second year of my original strawberries that are over here look at this they're flowering and this one here this is gonna be my first strawberry ever my first homegrown strawberry ever so um, that's a good sign. This is in a strawberry pot. It's way over planted, but um, I'm really just looking forward to having my first homegrown strawberries ever. And um, I think in coming years, I'm going to start collecting different kinds of strawberries um, and just planting them wherever I can using up space. They're a great ground cover. They spread easily. Um, so I don't see why not. Um, let's see, back to over here. Sorry for all the spinning peas. I actually sowed these when it was way too cold and um, just left them there and they sprouted on their own and came up on their own. I'm building this little trellis. Um, however, at this point, once they start getting a little bit taller, I'm just going to take a string and, and do what I did here where I just kind of pull them all back um, to hold them into place instead of, you know, putting fancy little strings like I did here because it's just too much work and I'm not about that life. Um, so... Hopefully we'll have peas in the next, I don't know, a couple weeks. Um, but I want to get let these get pretty tall so I have a lot of peas because I love them. Um, tomatoes. This is my first time growing tomatoes on my balcony. I started from seed. I got three different heirloom varieties. Um, and this one here is a indigo rose tomato. It's actually like a blue tomato um, through Oregon State, I believe. So I'm pretty hype about it. It's doing great. It's really tall. Um, and I'm following some pruning guidelines with it. Um, 
as you can see, I'm pruning off all of these lower branches and this one's gonna come off next, but I'm trying to space it out so I don't shock the, tr the plant. And then I'll probably tie it up to the top of the cage here once it gets to that point um, because tomatoes are vines. Um, I also have this tomato here. It's a little bit shorter, but this one is starting to put out some flowers. Um, and I'll let it go. It's only a couple. This is a uh, bumblebee cherry tomato. Um, they came in three different colors. I wasn't thinking forward enough about labeling which color, so I don't know which color this is going to be, so it'll kind of be a nice little surprise. Um, again, it's doing awesome. I planted in these 10-gallon grow bags that I got off of Amazon. Um, and same thing, I'm, I'm cutting down on these lower leaves to prevent any splash damage for them. But yeah, I mean, these are really healthy, awesome looking plants that I started from seed in my living room a couple months ago. Um, the other tomato was over here. This is a golden jubilee tomato. Again, it's an heirloom variety. Um, I, I put it this one up here in more of a full sun space because I'm curious to see the difference between the other two that are growing um, back towards the balcony versus up in the full sun area. So um, we'll see who grows better, who looks better, you know, that fun stuff. Um, also, I have my avocado that I started from uh, an avocado pit from the grocery store. Um, once again, I just had it inside. It's not going to stay out here for the winter. It'll come inside. Um, but I figured why not let it get some uh, sunshine and stuff. Um, and, you know, see how big it gets and then I'll have to chop off the top to promote some more um, lateral growth as well. Um, I also am sowing some seeds. Um, well, lemon balm seeds went in here and then I'll also get some peppermint cuttings uh, from my aunt's house at a later date to stick in there and propagate as well. Um, so I have mulberries. And I don't know if you'll remember from my last video, I ordered a mulberry bare root plant online. And as you can see, it's not doing anything or it wasn't. Um, it was about twice the size and I pretty much chalked it up for a dud and um, either that freeze got to it or it just wasn't happening. However, I cut it down and if you can see, there's some green. It's starting to grow. So, before I realized that it was going to actually grow, I went and bought a mulberry plant. Um, it's a patio fruit that I got at the garden store. It's an ever-bearing mulberry. So now I have two mulberries, and I'm not even mad about it because I've never had a mulberry before, and now I'm going to try them at some point, eventually, someday. Okay. Um, over here, with my trellis, I've got peas. I have cucumbers. These are Armenian cucumbers. They grow really long and skinny. Um, they're still babies. I started these from seeds. I have cucamelons. Um, these are also called mouse melons because they look like teeny tiny watermelons, but they taste like cucumbers. Um, so I ordered these as, from seeds as well, and um, really excited to try them. I've never had a cucamelon before. They are really awesome climbers so I'm really impressed by the way that they're climbing I started them way too early by the way so I don't recommend it and then I have more peas down here I love peas we'll see how many peas I can get um, planters chives nasturtiums this is a lemon that I started from seed um, just leaving it out here to get the Sun and to save on electricity this is an elderberry that was taken from a cutting from my original elderberry plant at my aunt's house um, it's a black lace variety, and my aunt was nice enough to take a cutting for me, from one for herself and one for me. Um, so I will have my own little elderberry. Eventually it will have to go into a larger pot, but for now, it can hang out here with Buddha and the candle. Um, I have dill and borage down there. Oh, let's see. Blueberries. So, decided to add some blueberries to my setup. Um, if you'll remember, I got teeny tiny little blueberry plugs last year, or last fall. They died. They're dead. But we replaced it with a full-size blueberry here and a full-size blueberry here. They were fairly inexpensive um, from the store, 
This one is flower. It's flowering. Um, I don't recommend letting it flower at this point and I'm probably going to rip it off because this thing is way too dinky to support any sort of fruit production right now. I don't expect to get fruit from this for at least another couple of years um, when it's about triple in size, but um, we'll see if it grows a berry because I want to try one just to see. This is a honey berry. If you all remember, I don't know if I had it at that point, but um, it was a dink. It was like this tall and now it's like four times that size. It's growing great. These produce a berry that is similar to a blueberry, but it's a little more elongated. Um, so I've never tried a honeyberry before. I'm looking forward to trying it. Um, eventually I'll try to propagate it. These are very cold hardy, so I'm not too worried about these to be outside. I don't know what that plant is, but I am just going to leave it there for now. This is um, my three sisters bed. It's planted. It's growing. We have corn, uh, nasturtiums, there's beans in there, there are sunflowers coming up here, and zucchini that I just recently planted as well. It's going to take some time to grow out. As you can see, the corn is tiny. The beans are a little bit too big for it, uh, but that's okay because I have this trellis back here for these other beans that are also growing. Um, same kind of beans. Um, I think it's like a pole bean, like Geary pole bean or something like that, Great Lakes. Um, so these will trellis up. I grew these last year. They were great. Awesome green beans. I wanted to try some other varieties, but I didn't see any at the store at the time. So I just said, whatever, I'll go with what I had. So we'll see how this works. I don't really expect to get a harvest of corn, but um, it'd be really cool if I did. I definitely planted enough that I could definitely get some pollination. And I have my olive. It's an olive tree. I got it at the grocery store. It dropped all of its leaves in the winter. I thought it died and then I stuck it outside and it's growing. It's alive. It's doing great. So super excited. Um, again, this will be one that I'll move back inside. These are like my house plants, but I'm just out here just to um, take advantage of the summer and the temperature and everything. And lastly, I bought some bell pepper plants. These are, um, I think a yellow bell pepper. Obviously they need planted still. Um, I just need to get one more bag of potting soil, which is probably my motto at this point of like, just one more bag, just, I need just one more bag, um, which is never the case. I always need more potting soil. So that's pretty much it. Um, here's kind of a good view. Oh, I also have a little bit of rainwater collection going on here. It's kind of janky looking, but, uh, it's basically just gallon jugs cut in half that, um, collect some water and then it funnels down and it actually works really well. It's just some tubing and then it funnels down into this pitcher. Um, it really only works when there's like really, really heavy rains, but, um, I've like the last storm that we had that, that tub was filled and I actually had to come out here in the middle of the storm and dump it into my watering can so it could keep filling. So, um, just a little bit more self-reliance out here. Um, I might try to put some more along the railing but I don't want to get in trouble for it. So we'll see what happens, but um, that's pretty much it. So just a quick little walk through. I haven't decided if I'm gonna fill these yet or not. I kind of like them because they do collect water and it funnels down into the pots um, just as another collection form. So I'm just gonna um, leave them empty for now since I still need more potting soil anyway. Um, and maybe I'll plant some flowers in them later in the season, not sure yet. Um, so thanks for joining me, and stay tuned for the next update on um, my garden. Hopefully by then I'll start getting like tomatoes and cucumbers and all the fun stuff. And I'll definitely show off my first strawberries so everyone can see. Thanks for watching.